Well, hello there, my name is HW, and thank you so much for watching Tone Junkie TV. Guys, I recently put out a new product for the Kemper, um, and it's not really a new thing, they've been around for a while, but it's the first time Tone Junkie has done anything like this. I put out these Kemper cab packs, and it really came out of me making IRs, primarily for the Helix, and for the Axe Effects, and for other, other uh, platforms that use IRs. But one of the things uh, that you can do with the Kemper is actually take those IRs, use this thing called the Kemper Cab Utility, and you can convert them into a, a, a KIPR file, which is like a profile, uh, or which is the, the profiles are KIPR files, um, but it actually is just the cabinet portion, and it appears in a little different spot in the Kemper. And so I wanted to show you guys a closer look and walk you through some of these new cabinets and these cabinet packs from Tone Junkie, um, and show you kind of what you could do with just Kemper cabinets. Um, these are IRs. I've made them using um, a bunch of different microphones, you know, a Fathead, a 906. Um, uh, I did a 57. I did like a, 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 a um, there's no 421s, but there will be very soon. Um, there's some Royers. Uh, there's a Royer 121, a 57. There's basically 10 in each pack, or there's the bundle that has 40. So there's three packs, uh, the matchless pack or the match, match uh, uh, cab pack has two different speakers in it. But I wanted to show you how you can use these. Now on the Kemper in general, um, I just want to say I don't believe you need to grab different cabinets to get the best tone. It's not like the Helix where, <clears throat> in general, the feeling is that IRs are better or as good as the stock cab. Um, a lot of people will say the stock cab in the Helix is perfect, it doesn't need any help, but almost everyone agrees IRs are great and you can get really great sounds with IRs and a lot of people think that IRs are better than stock cabs. It all depends on what you're going for. It all depends on the sound you're dialing in, your guitar. It's all relative. But I think there's some really cool stuff we can do here with Kemper cabs. And if you've noticed, Tone Junkie has been including direct profiles in uh, our profile packs for a while now, which means a lot of you guys who've been buying Tone Junkie packs, you, especially if you have an unpowered Kemper, you, you may not have realized what you can do with these direct profiles because you haven't had a use for them until now. Until now is the uh, key phrase there because now you're gonna be able to get a very authentic experience and really experience um, those direct profiles and figure out, well, what is it gonna be like if I took that amp and paired it with other speakers and microphones. In the past, we would have been relying on the Kemper to sort of make an educated guess on what part of this sound of a, pro, of a studio profile is the cabinet and what part is the rest of the chain. And the Kemper does a pretty good job of that. But by capturing these direct profiles and then capturing IRs separately and then converting those IRs to work as a Kemper cab, we're getting a very authentic experience of what it would be like to take that amplifier and actually plug it in uh, to several different speaker setups. So first of all, let me show you what you have to do here. To get these loaded in, I'm just gonna explain it really quickly. You actually cannot use um, Rig Manager, and I apologize for that. It's not of my doing. I'm hoping Kemper adds that feature in. You should just be able to drag these cabs and go right over to Rig Manager and put them in, but you can't. What you need to do is get a little USB stick. Once you have the USB stick plugged into the back of the Kemper, you're gonna notice it says external storage right here. And external storage, go ahead and click that. You're gonna see backup or store, import, export, format device. If this is your first time using a USB, you're gonna to wanna to format the device. Go ahead and let it format. Now, come back, take that little USB stick, put it in your computer. You're gonna take that USB stick, open it up in, once it's in your computer, and you're gonna see a folder called shared. Drop in the cabinet stuff, the cabinet section files, the, the cabinet pack, into the shared folder. Just the files, don't put folders and stuff. I think it'll work with folders, but just drop the files in. Take that USB stick, put it back in the back of your Kemper you'll see that external storage uh, uh, icon there appear again, that title. You're gonna hit external storage again. This time you're gonna hit input, import, export. The Kemper will do the rest. Once you have hit import, export, and the Kemper has done its job, now pull up a direct profile. I'm using this Spacey Tone D profile, D3. D stands for direct in this case, and Spacey Tone uh, has to, is, is the amp. It's a, it's a profile of an atomic space tone. Uh, amplifier. And uh, three is just the third profile I made in the sequence from clean to dirty. So it sounds like this by itself. It might clip the channel here because this is without a cabinet. That is theoretically 
what your amplifier sounds like without a speaker, without any coloration from the, from the cabinet, basically. If you were to take an absolutely transparent speaker, maybe Celestian makes some that are made for uh, modeling amps and stuff, and put your head into that and it provided it with a load, that's the sound you would get. That's the sound before we've applied the filter of a cabinet. What is an IR? What is a cabinet? Um, a cabinet, or, or what, it, you know, in the Kemper sense, well, a cabinet is a speaker and a, um, a speaker and a, a box of wood. And, and what that speaker is doing is applying an EQ curve because it's coloring the sound. It's taking a very high electrical signal um, and it's converting it into movement of the speaker cone. And that movement translates into something that we can hear. Well, it, it's, it, it provides a lot of coloration by doing that. That's why blues sound different than golds and sound different than, um, uh, you know, V30s sound different than blues, sound different than all sorts of stuff. And so IRs are really nothing more than, um, an IR is really nothing more than an EQ. But by using microphones and speakers and things, we capture an IR and it creates an EQ curve that's infinitely more complicated than we would dial in with just a bunch of frequency bands. And that can be very desirable because the sound of so many classic recordings have been with these classic microphones like Aurora 121 and 57. Okay, I'm talking too much about IRs, but these are basically IRs in your Kemper, these Kemper cab packs. So we've pulled up our direct profile. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit, now that I have my direct profile, I'm gonna hit the, the uh, cabinet button, I'm gonna hold it down. It's gonna say empty. I'm gonna use my browse knob, and boom, we have two options to choose from. You can choose a cabinet from rigs. Hang on, sorry, I had the auto load on there. I'm gonna hold down cabinet. I'm going to, from rigs presets. Let me turn off auto load so it doesn't load this cabinet. So you have the option to choose a cabinet that's existing in, in a rig right now. So I have a 65 England 12AX7-1 profile. The cabinet that's associated with that profile, that's part of that profile, I can pull up right now. The other thing I can do is click presets. Aha, presets. Now, if you downloaded the Celestian IRs, uh, if you put them on, this is where you're gonna find them. You're gonna find them right here. Uh, I've labeled these Tone Junkie IRs um, with usually gold in the front or whatever the name was. So check this out. Here is this amplifier with our sort of classic pairing, uh, a very classic tone junkie pairing to give you a base uh, for what this would sound, what this amplifier sounds like. I'm looking for the M75 R121 with a 57. And no, fathead at 57. There you go. Let's load that. So now, now what we have here is a direct profile of my favorite speaker and one of my favorite speaker combinations. Um, and so this should sound kind of like a Tone Junkie profile would normally sound. In fact, this would sound pretty similar to how we actually um, profiled this, this uh, cabinet, um, or this actual pack. So here we go. This is what it sounds like. This is with the M75 Fathead and 57. <laughs> sounds uh, kind of like a 57 and a fathead together. It sounds like that speaker I'm very used to. Okay, now check this out. Let's, now let's compare this to some other options in the packs. Uh, this fathead has a lot of low end with that 57. So let's listen to that low end in the fathead. Let's compare that to the same mic combination, but not using the fathead. Let's compare that to the 
one, the M75-121 with the 57. Now this is the Royer 121 um, with the 57 microphone. And so what we're going to get, what we're going to really hear is that 57 is still there, still in the exact same place on the cone, still with the exact same settings um, on the preamplifier. But what we're going to get is the difference between the low end, really the low end, and some of the difference in the high end. The fathead doesn't have an extended high end range like the Royer does. But we're going to hear the difference in that low end. Check this out. Not quite as much, not quite as much fatness. Not quite. It has a low end, but there's not as much fatness in the low mid range. I don't know what frequency is it. 200, 300, 400. I, that's that's like high bass almost, but um, that's really high bass for a guitar or, or bass for a guitar. The usable stuff. <laughs> It's, it's a beautiful sound, and it's something you might want if you had a little more, if you weren't trying to add as much girth to single coils. You know, the fat head might be better for adding some real low end to single coils, like a Tele or a Strat or something. Maybe this would be better as a little more all purpose. <laughs> I'm saying it has less low end. It's less than the fathead. The Royer 121 has plenty of low end because let's listen to what just the 57 sounds like on this speaker. You're really in for this now. Listen to this. Listen how different this will sound. Here, that sounds to me like every 57 sounding guitar I ever played live for years, you know, when you show up and they give you 57. It's got that 2K kind of spike. It has enough bass. I mean, you can mic a guitar amp with just a dynamic 57 microphone. It does a thing. It has some bass frequencies, but there's really a lot of pristine high end on there. You hear all that frequency in the highs and why it's such a pronounced bass, you know? It's a really cool um, uh, kind of sound and it's very useful in a mix. I think if you're doing any kind of demo work, production, this pack is r really useful, this M75 pack. And I think actually the whole bundle, it's it's only, I don't know, it's 40 bucks, but there's a code to get more money off. So it's like, no, it's 28, what am I saying? It's like 28 bucks and if you use the code, it's like $21 or something. Uh, but anyway, the code might not be up there forever, but it's less than 30 bucks. Um, so check this out. The let's try the 906 because the 906 is gonna have a little different response, but it's still just a dynamic microphone. Oh wait, 57. Let's go 7B. Here's the difference in these microphones. <laughs> To me, that uh, microphone, the 7B, sounds like a 57 if you added some more bass and took away some of the stuff that makes it a 57. I mean, it's, it's, a, 
It's one of my, I, I would say it's my second best, my second favorite microphone for, if I just was gonna have one microphone to mic a guitar, number two choice, 7B. It's not the most dynamic sounding microphone, to be honest with you, even though it is a dynamic mic. The SM7B is a vocal mic that is just useful for all sorts of different things. John Mayer uses these on his live rig. Now, my favorite mic to use, if I was going to have to just use one microphone all the time without mixing microphones, would be this Sennheiser 906. It's a really cool mic. You can hang it over the top. I think it's a cool shape. Uh, and it's got a high and low switch and stuff, uh, like a high pass, a low. You can cut the high end, you can cut the, you can um, increase the high end. You can do a lot with that microphone. Here's it by itself, and it sounds like this. It's a wonderfully balanced tone, uh, really a beautiful balance of sort of, it's got the low end. When I say it has the low end, it has a low end that doesn't sound like I cut all the low end out, but it's still a usable type of low end for a live mix. It's still a dynamic microphone. It doesn't have the tonality of a ribbon microphone, which will give you a lot more extent, like a, a kind of a really beefier low end or just a more airy sort of low and high thing. That's sort of what ribbons do. High end air or low end sort of fullness and this natural sounding. The ribbons do like a silky smooth highs. So you kind of hear the air in it. You hear the silk. It's very nice. And then the low end you get is kind of better than a dynamic microphone because it what you get in the lows on a dynamic microphone, it sounds like when the treble's really hot on the bass and you can hear all the clicks and clacks. That's kind of what the bass does on a dynamic microphone. You get the bass frequencies, but it's got all those other mids and highs on it. Um, the guys on that pedal show, if I'm not mistaken, it used to be like this. It may still be like this. Basically, every, um, every guitar, I believe, of mix that you hear is this microphone. I think all the guitars on there are just this microphone. Um, the 906 is a great mic. Now, let's, um, now there's some other things, you know, there's a fathead by itself, 121 by itself. The 121 by itself might be good if you're, if you're, if you're recording something, you know? A silkier top end and you get a, a th that proximity effect is bringing in a lot of fullness in the bass. It's a great sounding mic for sure. Let's try a different speaker. Let's jump over here and go to the golds and see how kind of different we can make this. Um, the match stuff is in here um, and I'm just gonna focus on the M75 and the golds for this video because there's just so many options. Let's let's jump back here. Let's go to 
Uh, the fat head and the 57 on the golds. This would be a very traditional tone junkie kind of way to mic it up. I've used fat head and 57 combo for the vast majority of packs right now. I'm mostly preferring fat head and 906, although I just did a two rock amp with a R121 and a 906 and it was beautiful. I just like experimenting with different stuff and I'm experimenting with a lot of different microphones now. And um, I'll have some more preamp options available soon with IRs and stuff. That'll be on the full pack, and those will be for the real tinkerers. But I think every Kemper owner can get a lot of use out of these core packs. That's why I put the core packs together. I say, hey guys, this isn't, a, this isn't a rabbit hole of 50 IRs for one speaker. It's 10 IRs with multiple microphones that are standards across the industry, close mic'd, straightforward. We did five dual, f five... Uh, uh, IRs, five Kemper cabs with dual mics, two mics together, and then the five by themselves. So if you, um, whatever you want to do with those, I think they can really help you from EQ standpoint live or, or in the it, mixing stuff, demos and stuff, or just, just finding really cool sounds. Different mics sound different with different amps. They complement amplifiers totally. That's a real thing. Here's that gold and it's going to sound way different. <laughs> Sounds to me, you can really hear the difference in the gold and the M75 there. Sort of a greenback type tone going to the gold. A lot of people always perceive Alnico speakers as very bright. To me, it's not the brightest sound in the world. Let me jump back really quick to that M75. By the way, these are mic'd up like identically, identically. Check this out. There's actually more high end here. I've always noticed this about Alnico speakers. They have a reputation because of the amps they get paired with. Because what they really do is that amount of high-end roll-off allows you to take a, a, an amplifier like a Vox, really get bright with it. And it actually keeps the high-end very pleasant because those Alnico speakers are helping big time. It's hardly a dark sounding speaker by any means, but it really pushes that, that mid-range, that chimey, kind of upper mid-range thing. And it's very shallow in the bass. And that's really useful because if you've ever turned a Vox on 10 or an EL84 amp or a smaller amp on 10, you start to get a lot of gruntiness. And this cuts out a lot of that lower end gruntiness and shifts it sort of up to this low mid-range. And that's why the Voxy sound is often thought of as that really chimey quality. And it's, to me, the Voxy sound people have in their head is just as much the Alnico speaker as it is something else. Because when you take a Vox and you put a green back with it, you lose a bit of that. You lose a signature characteristic of the sound. Now, I actually really love green back speakers with my Vox stuff, because I think you still get that high end out and you get a, a, a little fuller of a bass. But here's my opinion. If you run the amp a little bit cleaner, like you get it clean to edge of breakup, I prefer the, the, the green back a little bit. Now, it doesn't completely do the Alnico thing because I, and actually, if you look at the HW Kemper performance, which is free to download on the, on the profile, on the, um, the Tone Junkie website, and it's free to uh, download on the, um, uh, you know, uh, the free pack. You're going to notice in there, I have one AC30 with, with blues and the rest are all greenbacks. The reason is you can't replicate what, how a blue sounds clean and sort of edge of breakup, but... I really like the greenback for what it is, clean and edge of breakup. But when you really start pushing that thing, if you don't use a pedal, I find that the blues do the 10 sound, the Brian May thing better because they keep that low end in check. They keep that low end shallow. That's a trick you can use too with these microphones. If you got too much low end on an amp or on a profile, it's just too much, try a different microphone. That's another way to adjust this stuff. So fathead and gold. <laughs> To me, it's such a beautiful amount of low end. It's such a beautiful sound. And with that 57, it really cuts through. If you were to listen to just this gold with that fat head, 
Now we've got um, the gold getting rid of a lot of low end, but the fat head really trying to pick it up. hearing there is sort of that fat head it doesn't have as, as extended highs as the Royer 121 but it has a lot of just fullness it's fat in the low end let's pair this fat head now same with the gold but now let's pair it with a 906 and so now it's the fat head and the 906 together so you're getting really two of my favorite microphones <laughs> Gosh, I like that sound. I really do. I like the low end I get out of it. It sounds great in the room. I hope it sounds great on the recording. Different speakers kind of bring out different stuff. But with my cabinet here that's sitting off screen, how I'm monitoring this video today, um, you're hearing the direct audio, but um, I'm monitoring in this room just to hear myself while the direct audio goes you know, into the, into the recording software. Um, I hope this illustrates what I'm saying. You, know, you can really get a lot of usable tones. Let's go to that 906 by itself. <laughs> Now instantly what I'm hearing is, I don't love the 906 with this gold. It's fine, could work in a lot of situations, but inf instantly what I'm hearing is, okay, wait a minute, with the greenback type speaker, with the M75, I thought the 906 was killer, awesome, amazing, it, it's great. Uh, that's why I've said this is my favorite microphone. But now we're getting into a nuance here where this is maybe my favorite microphone with a lot of types of speakers. But when we're using a gold like this, if you told me I got, I would always take a blend. I would always take a Royer 12157 or a Fathead a 906, Fathead 57, whatever. But if you told me what's the one microphone here that I, that I probably like the most, it might be this with an Alnico speaker like this, a Royer 121. And this profile is a little bit close, um, or this cabinet's a little bit close. <laughs> Sorry, you know what? I take that back. I think I would go with that. This might be it, because I like the fatness, you know? Yeah, I just dig it. I think I would go with this because I really like having that fat full low end and I think it complements this speaker well. Now, in a dense mix, would this work? Not as much, but what I could do in a denser mix is go right here. I get my full sound and a sound engineer can cut out some of the low end that he doesn't want. <laughs> What's really cool about that sound is it should sound kind of familiar because you are definitely used to the sound of a 57. 
everybody gets used to the sound of a 57 because so many, so much recorded music is just a 57. Now, want to hear one that could really work really well in the mix, but I don't know. Uh, maybe it will, maybe it won't. Uh, but this is already kind of a shallow low end speaker, already a lot of mid range. Now you put a 57 in front of it. I don't know. <laughs> That would sound great with a band. In fact, that's the sound I want. If I'm going to pull up and I'm going to play just live, I mean, take advantage of what a 57 is. There's a reason it's so ubiquitous and it gets used so much. If I'm just going, if I'm playing live, I'm going to default more towards that kind of, kind of cabinet. <laughs> That sounds really great. Just for fun, I'm going to jump back to the M75 and the um, and the 57 because honestly, I kind of prefer that 57 over everything else we did for live use. I would prefer that. <laughs> HW likes a 57, who would have thought? That's what I would want guitars to sound like live, honestly. If I'm in a cover band or something, I mean, that just sounds like rock and roll. Um, you can hear how much more low end is in that greenback type speaker than was in the blue, the gold right before it. And that's the point of these cabs. That's really the point of these. really the point of these things. That's the point of these cabinets uh, and these cab packs is just to give you more options. Take those direct profiles, put them on a USB stick, load them into the Kemper and do it, man. It's so good. These are so good. I mean, I'm so pleased with the way these IRs came out. There's so many options. Um, at minimum, at minimum, everyone should have the M75 and the Golds. Because it's it's classic Alnico, Alnico, it's classic Greenback with five classic microphones, and then five pairings that I think work really well together. And some of them are just options. You know, is a Royer 121 and a 7B really so much better than a 906 and a Royer? I don't know that that opinion exists out there in any real numbers. I like a 906 a little better. Um, I know uh, uh, some guys I showed these to; they were really fans of the 7B profile, the 7B, um, and the and the 121 together. To me, it's all it's it's guitar dependent. They're they're getting so close, but you get five pair five classic mics, five pairings of those classic mics worked in together, and and there's going to be more more down the road. There's going to be more. I'm going to do a more expanded pack. Uh, it's going to be larger. It's going to have like 30 IRs per speaker or something like that. That's if you want to go in the rabbit hole. To me though, if you're doing any type of demo recording. And you know what? These I just want to say this. These pair really well with studio profiles as well. You can use them for that. They totally work. Is it the most accurate thing in the world? I I, I don't know. I don't know. It sounds good though. Is there a difference between a direct profile I make and taking that same setting on the amplifier, making a studio profile, and then defeating the cabinet? There is a little bit of difference. In my opinion, the cabinets that the Kemper creates... Uh, let me make sure I say this clearly. When you make a studio profile and then you defeat the cabinet, the cabinet it creates that it defeats to me leaves a little too much high end in the amplifier section. That's the no, that's the difference I notice. It leaves a little too much high end, meaning the cab it creates is a little bit on the um, on the darker side. But when I've shot these IRs, you'll notice they're a little on the brighter side, and these direct profiles will have more brightness. So. 
what you might notice is, so, so is it accurate? To me, that little bit of high end, it, it's not, it doesn't break the bank. So I'm just as comfortable taking a studio profile defeating the cabinet, putting these IRs on. And what I might need to do is go into the amplifier section and just roll that definition control back a little bit. And that's the type of adjustment you might make just for a speaker by itself anyway. Guys, I hope this was helpful. A little bit of a long video, but I wanted to really take a closer look at some of these, uh, these, these cabinet um, packs, these new Tone Junkie Kemper cab packs, because I'm going to be making more IRs, and that means I'm going to be, there's no reason I don't convert them and make them Kemper cab packs. I think these are super useful, and I've been secretly putting in those direct profiles. You know, there's, I get a bunch of questions. Hey, HW, what's, the, what do I do with this, this folder? It says direct in my profile pack that I bought. Answer is now here. You can either use them on your powered Kemper, which a lot of you have been doing, but if you have an unpowered Kemper, you now have a foundation to go add cabs to from these cab packs and start experimenting with different microphones and developing preferences and developing preferences of speakers and microphones. This is a really cool way to get, uh, to take advantage of the Kemper's technology um, without just buying profiles. You can buy, you can get those direct profiles in the, in the packs and then now you can use these cab packs. These cab packs will work brilliantly with other people's direct profiles as well. A lot of people have just direct profile packs and they're they're kind of designed for use with a power Kemper, but there's no reason they don't work in this application. This is a highly, highly accurate way to break down a rig and have your choice of different speakers and microphones and amplifiers. I've been HW. Thank you so much for watching Tone Jenga TV. I love you guys. Your support means the world to me. Can I ask you for two little favors? Check out the Tone Junkie podcast. Subscribe. Can you, um, if you if you listen to that podcast, leave a leave a, a, a positive thing wherever you're listening. Leave a review. And if you guys wouldn't mind, give this a thumbs up, a like. If you're watching all the way to the end, I'm assuming that you found this helpful. If you're watching all the way, hit that notification button. Um, you'll get notified when there's new stuff. If you're into that. If not, I've been HW. Thank you so much for watching. HW out.